I used to carry a nine millimeter all the time. A little bit of failure is what makes you stronger. Recycle your pain. You can't just say, okay, let's pull up my bootstraps and let's do this. I wanted more. I wanted more. I needed more. I needed to be successful for myself. Fear is manifested in our minds. Thank you for joining me. Tonight, I'm going to be discussing the narcissist. Loving the enemy. Idealized, devalued, dumped, and discarded. Poof. I'm going to say it again. Idealized, devalued, dumped, and discarded. Ever had a relationship like that? Where you, in the beginning, you are everything to the other person. And then as time goes on, you're devalued. You're not as important. What you say is not as important, especially if you have to any constructive criticism or any real criticism for the partner, the other partner, then you're dumped. Bye. And then you're discarded and never thought about really again to where they'll contact you or ever, other. No real apologies. No real empathy. And they'll say, a narcissist will say, oh, I have empathy. I feel bad for what I did. But a narcissist will only have empathy or feel bad when it has to do with something surrounding them. They're very good at saying that they have it for you at times. But when in reality, if you look back at the situations when they say they have it, it's really about them. I've dove, dove into this because of, for my show, as well as for some two, two relationships I've been in, and a key part about a narcissist is that they, they, they attract a codependent. Now a narcissist can have, there's, there's two forms, a covert and an, and an overt, um, is all the new real names for it. And I'm going to read to you the textbook definition of a narcissist. Now, just because I read this and I say what it is does not mean you're a narcissist or the person that you know is a narcissist. There's several criteria that they must meet, basically four or more, to be considered a narcissist. And there's different levels. There's a, there's a broad spectrum of narcissism. A good example is Hitler was a narcissist and a sociopath. The word sociopath is usually intertwine with the word narcissist because a sociopath has no feeling in other words they can hurt and inflict pain on others and not think twice serial killers are sociopaths and have narcissistic personalities Jeffrey Dahmer I mean you go down a line the percentages are 75 percent male 25 percent women the traits are normally, they're very close to the same, but they're not. And I'm going to get into both tonight. But in specific, I'm going to specifically talk about both, but more so even about a female. Because, and there's different levels of narcissism. When you have the grandiose uh, narcissist, that's the... The male who could be the best CEO on the planet and, and has a huge inflated sense of their own importance. A deep need for admiration and a lack of empathy for others. But they make the best CEOs, the best politicians. Uh, but the worst husbands, boyfriends, <laughs> fathers. Because there's no real love for their children, their employees, their spouse, or friends. With a female, it's the same way, but there's, there's more about their sexuality, their appearance, 
and male too. I'm sorry, you know, these are the same, but more so the female and their children. Uh, and I'm going to get into more specifics, but back to the the idealized, devalued, dumped, and discarded. Think about the relationship you've been in. You've been you know, idealize, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me, da 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 and then slowly, you are devalued. And a key thing about someone with NPD is when you go to criticize them, or even if it's constructive, they will insist that it is you. They will insist it's not them. They will become very defensive very very defensive and they want to keep narcissists want to keep their space almost perfect and now you can have a combination here of OCD borderline personality disorder a whole other things and they call it the triangle of disorders and it comes from and I'm gonna be you know I'm gonna be straight with this many things a lot of it's from from young upbringing severe abuse lack of love from a parent um, or it could be something that, that traumatized them or they're born that way with this mental disorder and it's not treated with medications it's treated with psychotherapy ie talking and usually you know um, psychologists can diagnose it but it, it's best to have a psychiatrist to deal with a psychiatrist and a psychologist to handle the, the the therapy part of it. But a psychiatrist is equipped the best. But a lot of narcissists don't like to go to psychiatrists because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth. That they have a problem. That's part of the narcissistic personality. Women are more prone to, to and open to therapy than men are. Uh, that's just the statistics. Now, the the textbook definition of a narcissist is as follows. NPD is a mental disorder in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. But behind this mask of ultra-confidence lies a fragile self-esteem that's vulnerable to the slightest criticism. I welcome criticism. I also believe, however, that narcissists, everybody has some form of narcissism in them because you, when you do something good, you want to tell the world. If, you, you, if, you, if you've achieved something and you've been successful, you want to tell the world. If you've, you know, if you've got a good family and these things, you, you know, you, you brag about them or you, you know, people want to tell people or they're proud about it. And You'll see a lot of males who are narcissists with, with all the cars and, and in the gym every day. They have to be in the gym every day. They have to show off their body. They have to be this. But they're horrible boyfriends. They're horrible bosses. They're horrible because they're, they're, and they'll go into fits of rage. Um, they're very, very abusive to their partners. Um, and it's basically all about a narcissist is a very selfish person it's about me 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 and ha cannot really show empathy for another person they may say that they are or they'll feel bad it's very short-lived usually the only time they feel bad is and they'll say they feel bad for the other person is when it really the, what the other person is upset about really has to do with something of distorting their own world or their own safe place and I've done serious three weeks of research on this and talked to two, two psychologists and, and a psychiatrist because I had to know how another human being could really discard another after one minute telling them that they love you and the next minute saying nothing and that they that they do but they couldn't and then they just discarded them no other real apologies for their behavior no real anything just back to the same the key with a narcissist is they have to keep their supply fed in other words 
they have to feed the narcissistic personality with some form of attention where it come from work home for a female um, their children from a female things like that they have to feed it and usually they'll have find someone to feed it so in feeding it if there's a if there's a break in the the perfect shell that they have they're also very paranoid people at times in other words they don't want to be seen badly and by anyone in their circle especially they just don't they don't want to see be seen badly at all and they'll do, go to great lengths to keep that hidden meaning perfect they'll keep their their issues hidden and keep it perfect it's almost like wearing rose-colored glasses so to speak and several disorders go together you know and we all have issues <laughs> i don't care what anybody says watching this unless you're a narcissist and then you'll say no i don't have any issues uh, i'll give you a quick example a friend of mine a good friend of mine and colleague in florida she's a female she dated uh, and I, i'm not going to mention his name because he's quite famous book movie types of things like that um she dated a classic narcissist he's an ex-dea agent ex-military and here's a key point our society is, is breeding narcissists um proven another proven fact the military will after taking you know you got to go in and take your exams and all these things and you go through all these different meetings with psychiatrists psychologists da 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 da, da. if they find and, and find that the ptd uh uh npd slash sociopathic type behaviors you're going into special forces because then you could kill somebody and not blink an eye you'll follow orders you'll do it and you can sleep at night It's like another with a narcissist who hurts someone male or female they can go to bed at night yes they might be upset and things like that but it's a they're upset about what's happened to their world not what they did to the other person it's a break in their world and they can't function and they have to maintain it and they have to bring it back to its norm and this will pass very fast male or female they hurt someone else, which they do on a regular basis. There's no, like, I'm really sorry, and it won't bother them for a long time. They'll be right back at it. They'll be right back out there to feed. They have to feed it. They have to feed the narcissism. A narcissistic personality causes problems in many areas of one's life relationships work school financial affairs they're usually generally unhappy disappointed in things if they're not given special favors or attention that they believe that they deserve others don't enjoy being around them um, and they find relationships unfulfilling including marriage and these disorders, this disorder, and the ones that combine with, these are not treated with medication, like manic depression, as I discussed in my other shows, is something I've suffered with for many years and have under control. But you, it takes psychotherapy, i.e. talking, and the person realizing that they have this problem and how to correct it. Because anybody can break a habit if they consistently do something, proven fact, of the brain. Um, there are several types of this disorder, um, but mainly there's covert and overt. Uh, let me see. They also look down on other people. They won't come off that way, but they will look down on other people, and it'll show eventually. It shines through. Um, they become impatient angry and i don't mean it has to be yelling and fitting the rage but there are those types as well 
they have to have the best medical care, the best this, the best that. It's not satisfying enough. But they have the biggest problem handling criticism. You can never tell them that there's anything wrong about them or that they're wrong. They will have a fit. And they will then change the subject drastically to stop, not even discuss it, and try to keep everything perfect. That has to be perfect. Um, you know, like, how about we just stick to being happy with one another and not discuss anything else about our lives and just move forward in this and not look at anything else. Uh, I'm giving you the aim, you know. Or they'll be in, in a lot of mail they be they be little people um, so that they can uh, feel superior uh, they you and to the other person you might get depressed because you feel you know short of perfection they also are perfectionists. I'm a perfectionist as well I, I, I've been I've learned to deal with that in my life because in, in my business it would cost me lots of money and it cost me lots of stress because I would do things that, and see things that others couldn't. You know, and I used to have OCD when I was younger. Um, came from an abused childhood, severe. I mean, I, I've overcome a lot. I don't even, now I'm not, my closet doesn't have to be super perfect and, and things like that. And I believe in life we can teach and help ourselves through these things once they're identified. But don't kid yourself, narcissism is serious. I mean, serious. Hitler was a narcissist <laughs> and a sociopath. Um, the key here is that narcissists are attracted to codependence. And a narcissist can also be a codependent as well, combined with all of this. You don't have to be a full-blown narcissist. This could just be part of the many issues that someone is suffering but when you throw them all together it, it, it's pretty rough um, there's no real moral boundaries with them as far as they'll say that they're in but they're really not and they hide they they, they live in a world that they must keep perfect and if it's not perfect, they get panicked. They can't function. Meaning, and I don't mean everything has to be perfectly neat and in order. That's part of a lot of this as well. That's where the OCD goes. But they can't have anyone, they don't like if anyone dislikes them. They have to make, they want to, it's almost like somebody who wants to please everybody. But they're doing it to get attention and fulfill it, their own needs. And they are abusive. Males are very explosive. And I mean on a constant basis. Not once in a while. They're abusive. You'll find a lot of, of, of wife beaters. Uh, woman abusers. Womanizers as narcissists. I'm going to be very fucking frank. I can't stand a woman. A man who hits a woman. Or abuses them in that fashion. Period. I think it's very cowardly. And I won't use the other word on the air. On, on, on here. And I'm going to go through some things and, okay, there's a criteria for a narcissistic personality for NPD. Now, if you have one of these, two of these, three of these, don't think you're a narcissist, okay? Um, it doesn't make you a narcissist. It could be something else. It could just be, you know, we're all human with issues. One is having an exaggerated sense of self-importance, and that can be at home, at work, uh, amongst friends, anywhere. Like, without me, this house wouldn't run. Without me, this wouldn't be this. Without me, this wouldn't be that. You know, me. everything's me, me, me. Um, expecting to be recognized as superior even without achievements that warrant it. In other words, somebody else gets promoted at work and they don't. They believe that they, they deserved it because... They did better than the other person when in fact they never did. That's another thing with a narcissist. And I, I brought it up a little bit. Criticizing them is 
a very key sign when you give somebody even constructive criticism and they cannot accept it and nobody likes criticism don't get me wrong but a narcissist will be like this will really bother them this will really bother them because you just shattered their world that they believe that they're perfect and everything is good and that they, they can't do any wrong they're the best at work they're the best at home they're the best this the best that you can't if that's shattered they it's 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 rough Another one is exaggerating your achievements and talents. Here's a good example of not, uh, you know, everybody likes to say what they've done. I do. I quit school in eighth grade. I was self million millionaire by 23. That's a fact. My company was taking in at that time $14, $15 million a year. That was in, in the, the late 80s, early 90s. I was a millionaire. My company was doing millions. I had million, over millions of dollars in assets. Is that exaggerating? Uh, no. Now, if I were to say that, you know, I was a multi-millionaire and had, at that time, $10 million in the bank, and life was great, different story. But a lot of them, their achievements are, you know, I just closed this real estate deal, and I did this, 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 and this, when, in fact, it really wasn't as big as that was. I'm just using that as an example. Um, but to themselves, they had to boost them, you know, I got this job and I'm going to be making this, 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 and this because of this. And in reality, it wasn't because of what they said. Um, here's a key one. Being preoccupied with fantasies about beauty, a perfect mate, brilliance. Um, in other words, they, they, they fully believe that they are the best wife the best husband, the best boss, the best of everything. Um, and that they're the very super intelligent. And when you question their intelligence or you, you come to head with it, they will toss you under the bus, <laughs> so to speak. In other words, no, there's no way you could be. There's no way you can have that. There's no way. And they'll play along. Now, here's a key part that I didn't say. Narcissists are like chameleons, they're survivors, like so to speak. They they will find you, they will recognize you, and they will become what you want them to be. They will figure they get to know who you are and what you need and what you want and what you expect, and you open yourself up to them because that's the, the thing that you, you feel like you should do because you feel like you have this great connection with them because they're everything that you ever dreamed of at first. And then as time goes on, you realize they're not this person. And then you start to bring it to their attention. And that's when, poof, pow, boom, everything changes. And someone who can identify with this says, wait a second. This is, this, I'm walking on eggshells here. No matter what I say or do, it's not the right thing. It's the wrong thing. You don't say it this way. They'll say something like, well, you could have said this this way. You didn't have to say it this way, even though it mean the same thing. And yes, words are important, but, you know, they'll pick out these things. Only to make themselves feel better. They don't like the way it sounded the other way because it was too real to really who they are. And once they sense that you're finding out who they really are, uh, that's when it happens. That's when you start, the, as the devaluation goes on, that's when you get dumped. Once they start figuring out you figured out who they are and their game is up, and they're good liars. A narcissist will never admit that they lie. Never admit that they lie, unless they're in therapy and going through the things and blah, blah, blah. But they will never admit they lie. You can catch them in a lie and it doesn't matter. If I lie, I'm going to tell you. Everybody lies. I don't care what anybody says. And it's proven fact, actually, now in psychology. Everybody lies in some form or fashion. It's like telling somebody they're beautiful today when you really didn't think they were. You're telling them, you know, to avoid conflict. So you shouldn't always tell the truth. And I'm a big believer in telling the truth because I went through something in my life that, it's a couple things that the truth, no matter what I said, didn't matter. It didn't set me free. You know, eventually it did. But at the time, it did not. And people don't like the truth. That's another part of it. A narcissist does not like the truth. They really hate the truth, especially when it's about themselves. Um, they require constant admiration. In other words, you know, 
you're beautiful, you're sexy, you're hot, for a woman to a man, you're this, you're that, but, but, but they have to constantly get, be admired, and constantly, and that's why they'll love a codependent. Codependent will feed their narcissistic needs. Former alcoholics, you know, uh, drug addicts, it, it doesn't matter. Codependency means lots of things. I mean, I'm not going to get too much into codependency, but it's key. And I found out I had my, some of my own codependency issues through uh, as an, of this. And uh, be, with these relationships. And codependency, you know, they... Uh, they like that because you'll feed their, the, the, you'll feed their ego, you'll feed them. They think that you know, they'll say, oh, "I'm not really that beautiful and that." But they, a woman, and I'm going to give you use an example. A woman, a woman, she will state clearly, "I am, I'm a sexy woman, and I want to emanate that to everybody." Now, that doesn't mean she's a narcissist. I'm just saying a lot of narcissistic women will say that and do that. They will also have to find a need. For attention from men other men and they will play off that they're you know not this type of person and this and that but in reality they are they have to feed the narcissistic disorder they have to another one having a sense of entitlement they believe that they are entitled i built this person i did this i made him this i made her that i did this I'm the one that sacrificed, I'm the one that did this, I'm the one that did that, I'm entitled to this, I'm entitled to this house, if they're going through a divorce, I'm entitled to this house, I made him, so I'm entitled to this house, I'm using these as examples, I'm entitled to this because of that, really, okay, now, in some cases, rightfully so, just because you feel entitled does not make you, we all feel entitled in certain situations, and agreeably so, I'm going to make this clear. This, these are just, you have to have four to five out of these to be considered some um, a narcissist. The others, expect, expecting special favors and unquestioning compliance um, and expectations. You know, I'm this, so I can. I need to get this. I shouldn't have to wait in line for this. I shouldn't have to do this for this. I mean, this is it. I'm entitled. You know, I, I'm I'm special, so I should get special treatment. You'll find a lot of actors, stars, um, public, major, major public figures with narcissists, and it's brought into them. It doesn't mean that they had from childhood or other stars that they become that. Then, because that's what they're shown and that's what's expected by reaching that achievement. Sports, I mean, you can go down the line, doesn't matter. Taking advantage of others to get what they want. They will, will just say they want you for sex. They will do whatever it takes, take it from you, then discard you, I devalue you, dump you. And discard you. Um, here's the key. Key. Having an inability. An unwillingness. To recognize. The needs. Of others. I was in this relationship. And, and one night I, I, I desperately needed. To talk to somebody. A very serious matter happened with me. And I, I needed to talk to somebody. And I was going through, you know, serious anxiety from it. And I really needed to speak to this person. And at the time, I believed that I loved them, you know. I was in love with them. Narcissist, you'll fall in love with a narcissist, trust me. And women do it all the time. As do men. And then I called them. And the lack of care concern and how I was talked to during that situation was shocking to me and it like just oh, was shocking and it was a one of the earlier on serious red flags like no care at all it was later explained to me that well when something happens that I I, I, I can't do anything about I, I revert back and don't say anything 
Hearts just have an excuse for everything. But the main thing they have, they, they have an unwillingness to recognize. They don't want to recognize the feelings in others. There's a, 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 or there's a complete inability to recognize. I mean, let's be real here. I mean, for you to not, for pe someone to not, uh, out of everything and what I've done my research, for you to not care about what you've done to someone else and not have it affect you or care enough to apologize sincerely and just move on and you they'll, and they'll say oh I feel sorry you know I'm sorry I couldn't eat for two days I could that's because their world got rocked it wasn't because they rocked your world and you know devalued dumped and discarded you or they got caught in their behavior or they don't want to recognize their behavior and you've brought things and that's when they got it that's it you got to go I can't have you in wrecking my world. I can't have you in here. I can't have you wrecking my world. That's it. My fantasy's blown. This is how it is. And now you've got to go put it back together again. Boom, boom, boom. This is all good. Wake up and I can go ahead and go on. And then they will find someone else to feed the narcissism. Now, I'm going to get into that after I get through this. Um, being envious of others and believing others envy you. Now, that comes to play, this is a common one, though, for anybody. You know, there are people who are successful. There's a lot of jealous people in the world. A lot of jealous people. I believe jealousy is the root to all evil, not money. People are very jealous. And when you're more successful than they are in anything, or you have a better, you know, your family, you're more happier in this, people get jealous. It's horrible to say, but people get jealous. Why? Because a majority of our society, all of us, have issues, and a majority of them are fucked up. Let's be real. People are fucked up. Some people have more baggage than others. But you get trapped with a narcissist or someone who has partial narcissism and then the lack of thereof and they don't want to fix themselves, you got a problem because you're going to be broken. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care what it is, especially if you're able to care and love someone else and you do truly fall in love and care for that other person who's the narcissist or has other behavioral issues combined together. You're going to be broken. I mean, you're going to be broken. And that's what they do, and then they go on their way. In the case of this relationship, with the married woman I was involved with, and I'm going to get into the, sim the, 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 the quickly the bullet points of for it. It's amazing how many match. But here's a key. After this, after I was dumped and discarded, I got a message. A shocking message. One thing with a narcissist, if they get to the point where you think you're going, their their image to others is going to be tarnished, and even how they're going to be looked at, and that the people that they 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 wanted to please, meaning so to speak, they want to make everybody believe that there's something in the society, in the neighborhood, in the community, at home, amongst friends, amongst this, they get ruthless, nasty, do horrible things. What I was threatened with from this person out of the blue was beyond words. Really? Over nothing. Over nothing to get to that point. And then there was an email after that said, and this is what they'll do, a narcissistic person will flip it around so it makes it that it's your fault now, this is coming from a married woman who said she basically wanted her cake and eat it too. In other words, have a man on the side and have her husband, who she claimed she didn't have a very good relationship with and was estranged from, so to speak, at home and living in a civil union and blah, 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 blah. Well, I found I, my, my rose-colored glasses are off and never contact me again because I know about all the other women. Oh, what? Somebody filled their head with some crap, or she made it up, or she believed it, or whatever it may be, just to make herself feel better, and flip the situation on me. In other words, she did no wrong as being the liar, the, 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 the cheater, the, the narcissist who used someone else for their own gains. Never a real apology, never anything, but now I'm the bad person. 
And during the time of the relationship, I wasn't with anybody. And it, and it was, okay, well, and they get very jealous as well. Narcissistic people are very, very jealous. Very jealous. I mean, extremely jealous. Like, this fucking bitch, what the, this person, fuck her, you know, I'll go pay her, I'll go and punch and punch her and just, really? I mean, I'm just using this example. There's many more men will be like, you know, I'll go over there and fuck this guy up or I'll do this or I'll do that. Don't ever talk to him again. A lot of insecurity with narcissists too. They believe that they're secure. They feed themselves that they're secure, but they're really not secure. Insecurity shows its head. Now, again, you have to have four or five of these things, uh, the, these points that I'm going over, these, these conditions to be a narcissist. So don't think, you know, we all have issues of whatever. Don't think that, you know, because you're one or two that, that you're a narcissist. And I'm going to make that clear because I'll get feedback from people and I want to make that clear. Um, now, here's another one. Being envious of others and believe is the others envy you. I'm, thinking, I'm, not, I'm not envy of anybody. I've never been jealous of anybody in my life. One thing I can say, thank God. I think jealousy is just horrible. Have I ever looked at somebody successful and said, wow, I want to be like them? Sure. I believe they're a role model. I've seen many businessmen or, or, or um, other builders or, or motivational speakers or whoever that I admire. And I'm like, wow, I, want, I would love to be as, as they are. Um, competition breeds success, you know. The other last one is behaving in an arrogant and haughty manner. Now, um, here's an, although some of the features of narcissistic personality disorder seem like having confidence, as I just said, they, it's really not. It's not confidence. It's not. Um, it crosses the border of healthy confidence into thinking that and they put themselves up on a pedestal and you know and value themselves more than they value others and you'll see this in their personality and you'll see this it, it, it's serious and I'm sure people watching especially with females with men you know they can pick this out I don't care if men don't like me for saying what I'm saying we all got issues um, but this is very serious because you will be idealized, devalued, dumped, and discarded. And you'll be left broken. And then you'll have to lift yourself up. And you'll have to move forward in this. But you'll have to move forward that you do not. You have to ask yourself, why did you end up with a narcissistic person to begin with? And they're good charmers, so it could be just anything. It could not not just be that there's something wrong with you, but it could just be that they, they, they brought you in. But a lot of people are codependent or in need. And a narcissist spots this. And I'll be very clear. Uh, uh, this individual said, you know, you're the first person for me in 30 years of my marriage. That she ever, you know, cheated on her husband with her. I don't buy that at all. I don't buy it at all. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I don't buy that. That's just my opinion and some information I've received as well as talking to doctors. I don't buy it. I believe that's just a, that's a mechanism in the brain to, to feed themselves that they are to the public and to everyone else that they are this perfect person. They were a great wife and mother and could never do such, you know, do something like that. So, and I believe there's been many boy toys, so to speak, on terms that she's used, and to feed her issues, to feed her just, you know, narcissism and control and, and use of power. She wasn't getting it at home. And that's what I'm going to get into with females now. There's, well, let me, first I'm going to go into the, the two There's vulnerable and invulnerable, which is the covert or overt. Um, narcissistic disorders. And they, they, they differ somewhat, but they're not super, super 
one would be someone who's very quiet and like doesn't um, show it, so to speak, and I'm trying to figure out the words that I can use. An invulnerable would be like um, a grandiose narcissist. In other words, we'll say Fred is a doctor. You know, um, he met Sharon at work, this other woman who's a nurse. He divorces his first wife, who helped him put him through school, and married Sharon, an attractive trophy wife, you know. Um, their relationship revolves around just him and his career. This is a grandiose. That's the invulnerable. That would be, you know, the, the overt. Um, and he routinely, let me see here. He routinely belittles Sharon behind the scenes in a case, and he slaps her for acting stupid. He's like the wife beater. He's you know the belittler. He's the the the, the real bully at home, but he does it behind the scenes because he's the doctor. He's the superior doctor. You know he could never do any wrong. Um, he doesn't want her to work. She gives up her career to raise children. He. Uh, trying to he doesn't want her to work so she gives up her career it he has several several affairs with secretaries nurses which he doesn't hide he does it openly he gets furious with Sharon when that, that upsets her and when the children get older and Sharon wants to return to work he belittles her abilities. So she devotes herself to volunteer work related to the children's activities. Then Sharon gets a can gets cancer and Fred gets the best treatment for her, but while she's in the hospital, he also develops a more substantial relationship with another nurse. When she finds out she's crushed not only about the affair, but his inability to emotionally support her. Understand, this is the grandiose this is serious stuff here. And I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. This man, you know, stay at home. Do this. I don't want you doing this. You can't be have a better career than me. You can't have anything better than I do. I have to control you. I have to control every move that you do. And 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 da 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 da. -da. Sharon was obviously codependent on the, on the good doctor, and she ended up sick for it. And there's been recent studies that I have here. Now that we're getting more advanced in this, that can go all the way back, like King Henry the Eighth was a narcissist and sociopath. And if you look at his history, as he got older, he got fatter and bigger and bigger and sicker, actually. People would get sick from being either with a narcissist or being a narcissist because they just, all those emotions and all the feelings, just they keep stuffing them and stuffing them inside. And they get sick. They get sick and they die. Rightfully so been cruel to many people um, now the vulnerable narcissists tend to be more sensitive often see themselves as victims uh, who don't understand how superior they are just like those with um, borderline personality disorder tend to be preoccupied with fears of, you know, th th that they're going to be rejected. They feel helpless and anxious and depressed when people treat them wrong. Um, they seem to be, the vulnerable narcissist is the one that they overcompensate. Um, and a deep, they also have a deep seated sense of shame that date back to their childhood. They develop the behaviors as coping mechanisms to deal with neglect, abuse, and dismissive style of parent-child attachment. Vulnerable narcissists tend to swing back and forth between showing off and feeling hurt and appearing to be trying to prove that they are superior to others and themselves. Um, here's the key in this one. In adult partner relationships, vulnerable narcissists care about how their partners and others see them. In other words, 
Partners often point out make, showing their vulnerabilities in an effort to change their partner's opinion. In other words, you want to help, a, a good partner wants to help the, the vulnerable narcissist. Um, any, any effort to hold them responsible for their own behavior may revol result in defensive attacking response or a self-destructive response. This is key. They don't want to face their issues. They don't want to say that they're sorry. They don't want to see that what they put that they don't. And this, I was told this. I don't like. Here's key. I don't like putting myself in other people's shoes. This is key. I don't like putting myself in other people's shoes. If you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes, and I've known this since I was younger, and see what your actions have done to them. You're a narcissist. And you may probably have other serious issues as well. If you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes and say and see how you hurt them, and I've hurt a lot of people. I just apologize to the world and I'll admit it. I've hurt a lot of people. And you know, I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But I want to correct myself. And have and continue to do every day by and being real that's being real with myself and I had to learn this it took me 40 you know 38 40 years to do it 45 now I had to learn this through many failures many successes many 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 things and here's the key you can't hold them responsible and we are all responsible for our own actions and just like as I explained at the end of this relationship, when I got this email that, you know, oh, my rose-colored glasses are off now. I see it. I'll never believe anything that you say. Really? You're the married woman going home, sleeping with your husband, and possibly God knows who else, because I don't know. And if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't know. I don't know. And it's hard with a narcissist, because you never know the truth, unless they get therapy and then they finally admit the truth to you. Me, I'll tell you the truth. If I hurt you and I did something to you, if I lied to you, I deliberately did something to you or anybody, I'll tell you. And I want to know, meaning for myself. I don't want the bad behaviors in my life. I want to be real. I want to be true to myself and to others. But I'm not perfect. None of us are. But this, this narcissistic personality is like, let's throw this on this other person. It's not me. Now I can go back and now feed it. Now here's key. This is key. In females and male health narcissists, usually their closest friend is someone who they believe is beneath them, not as good looking, not as successful, not as, and this fits the key of the persons I'm talking about, and somebody that they can control, obviously. That, and, and when that person either questions them or gets angry with them, they will bash them and not talk to them. There's another key. Narcissists, there's several different behaviors how they, if you say something to them that they don't like, and the show's going on 48 minutes, so the, if you say something to them that they, they, they don't like, they'll either give you the silent treatment and force you, because you care and you're the real person who loves and cares, to contact them and say you're sorry. It's very rare that they'll say they're sorry to you unless they'll do it. Rarely, they'll say they're sorry and contact you, but it's because they want to discuss it and make their point across so that they can make sure you believe and get their point as to, you know, it's not their fault. I did this because of this, or I did this because of that, or I did this because of this. But usually it's silent treatment or it's explosive. Um, and believe it or not, I'm going to be honest. I was, I was going out of my mind dealing with this. Because I knew it wasn't right. I'm a very, very intelligent man. And, and I'm not boasting that. I'm not grandiosing that. I have an extremely high IQ. I, I, I raised myself from leaving home at 15. You know, I'm not going to go through the things. But I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm, I'm a very intelligent person. Bad mistakes and all. Intelligent people make mistakes too. <laughs> um, I, I was like questioning this stuff. Like, what the hell is going on here? 
And there are times I was made to feel like, this is all me, this is all me, this is all you, this is all you. See it my way, it has to be seen this way, and if you don't like it seen this way, well, you know, it, it can't be. And it was very dysfunctional, very dysfunctional. And at the times when it was the, the, the when you didn't discuss anything else, and just discuss the good things and the happy things and everything was always happy and you had to say the right things and make it work. It was wonderful. However, it doesn't last that way because they all, they know from the beginning that they weren't interested and that's why she could never, in this other case, she couldn't leave her husband. She wouldn't have leave her husband. And I'm going to quickly get into this about the female narcissist because, and this is key. In the manifestation of narcissism, um, female and male narcissists do tend to differ. They emphasize different things. Men, as I said, emphasize intellect, power, aggression, money, social status. Women emphasize body, looks, charm, sexuality, feminine traits, homemaking, or their children and child rearing. Very key to my situation. Um, this individual was very much into children and rearing even other people's children and that's not to say because women love to be pregnant that's wonderful you bring a life into the world it's not so it doesn't make you a narcissist but when you have to rear other children and constantly even more children for yourself to feed this this need because um children will fill feed and i'll get into that hang on females concentrate on their body some may suffer anorexia bulimia but not in all cases, it's very limited. The women, the real narcissist will flaunt and exploit their physical charms, their sexuality. I am sexy, so I'm going to show the world. That doesn't mean I want to, as it's put, I don't want to fuck every man, but I want to exploit my sexuality so everybody knows I'm sexy. And their women also want their social and culturally determining femininity. In other words, they secure their narcissistic supply through more traditional gender roles. The home, children, suitable careers, their husbands, the wife of, their feminine traits, and their role in society. This particular woman had this whole world built to keep herself safe. Let's, no, it's to keep the narcissist safe with all the above that I just told you. Here's the key, though. I built my husband. I'm entitled to what I built. Key. Scary. Scary. Very scary. And this is what's happening in society as well with divorces and things. Women marry for money. Men marry for money as well. More so women. And they're actually, some of them are brought up that way. Find yourself a rich man, do your thing, and do your thing on the side. Amazing. And children having children feed will feed because they make the children dependent on them. It's all about my children. I, that's, I love my children. I mean, they so they, I love my children. I have to have my children. This is what it is. My children. My children. My children. My children will feed because the children they have to have somebody feeding the narcissist. They'll take them on trips to Disneyland or constantly. This will solve the problem. Or we'll go here or we'll go there. And they make the children love them. Let me buy them something here. Let's do this with them here. This is, you know. Um, another difference is males, how they react to treatment. Women are more likely, as I said, to, to engage in therapy because they're more likely to admit psychological problems. Men don't like to admit psychological problems. It's just like, a, you know. I'm a male, I don't have any problems, everything is good. Um, that's also society, it's, you know, beat into our heads from society. Men are the more powerful ones, and men have can't cry, and men can't do this. Yeah. Um, and the prime role of a narcissist, you have to understand, you, can't, you, cannot, you cannot forget this key point. The narcissist uses everything around her or him 
for the supply, as I had said. And children happen to be more attached to the female narcissist due to the way our society is still structured and to the fact that women are the ones to give birth. It's easier for a female to think of her children as her extensions because they once indeed were her physical extensions. Her ongoing interaction with them is both more intensive and more extensive. She needs that. Now, if you're a good mother and you, you love your children, doesn't mean you make a narcissist. This is just the differences when you have the other bullet point, you know, other issues. This is what feet goes into it. Um, the female narcissist regards her children as significant sources of a narcissistic supply, while the male narcissist is more likely to regard his children as a nuisance rather than a source of rewarding supply. Um, because a narcissistic woman does not have a diversity of alternatives that are available to men, she fights to maintain her most reliable source of supply, her children. She must maintain that environment. With the children, the happy house, the husband, the whole thing. Or if she doesn't have a husband, the children, the home, the fights. Has to have that. Has to have that perfect world. Has to have this whole, whole, whole there. Um, and she does this through insidious indoctrination, guilt, emotion, sanctions, deprivation of the psychological mechanism. She tries to induce a dependence in them which cannot be easily unraveled. And that's why they try to be the perfect mother. The perfect mom, you know, but at the same time, they're, they're pushing their mental issues on their own children. Um, so there's really, there is differences, but there's no psychodynamic, so to speak, difference between male and female narcissists. The only difference is, is their choice of supply to feed the, so their narcissism. Um, They're emotionally abusive. Are One thing about a woman, they are masters of what they call spin control or driving home their reality through verbal force and emotional reasoning. Um, this person, the female, clings to her belief system no matter how many times she's confronted with evidence to the contrary. <laughs> Same thing with a man, but more so with a woman. The more wrong she is, the greater the outrage and the drama she displays. Gets nasty. Da, 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 da. Boom. Key thing before I end this show. When someone says to you, I think you, you were over there at so-and-so's house. I think you fucked her. I think you slept with her. Or to the man. I think you went over there and you fucked him. I bet you were over there having sex with him. When someone projects that onto you or is suspicious or paranoid of you doing this type of behavior... It's usually because they're doing it themselves. Narcissists are known for it, but they'll never admit it to themselves. They will never admit that they lie, that they have I mean, this other source of, of need fulfilled. I will guarantee you that the situation that I'm discussing, it'll go right back to where it was unless this person continues to get help. Serious stuff. But when someone accuses you, oh yeah, I bet you're over there fucking so-and-so. Excuse my French, but that's how I am. I'm real. Really? Out of the blue? I went over to see a client, a female client doing thing, or it could be anybody. You went over here. You sure weren't out on a date? Sure weren't out getting some? How do I know what you did today when you disappeared and you, you just said you were doing this, this, and this? A female narcissist, like a male, is going to have several sexual partners. But they're going to make it believe and they're going to maintain that they don't. That they're the perfect woman or the perfect man. Well, I shouldn't say that. The grandiose man is going to just do it out in the open. Not care what the wife thinks. But on the other hand, a female's not going to do that. She's not going to want to be portrayed as a whore to other people. She's going to keep the whole world perfectly fit. There's a There's a common control tactic by a woman narcissist called the hoodwink. They call it the hoodwink. Um, it's when a narcissistic woman begins a conversation, uh, usually it's an attack, with one topic. When you present the facts that are contrary, 
to her beliefs, she hoodwinks you by going on a different tangent or topic, changing the subject or making a new accusation. What did I just say? This issue happened, her husband found out, and she told her husband. I'm going to be frank. It wasn't that he found out. She, she told her husband. She got paranoid and she told her husband in, in, in these situations. Whether it be that he found a little bit of something or this and that. She got paranoid and told her husband. She was afraid at first I was going to tell her husband. And at first because I had made those, I, I was going to tell him. Because I was going insane with this relation. I was going insane. I didn't know what to believe. I didn't know what was real. I didn't know. What, it was just. And I still haven't gotten an apology. I don't care anymore. But I still didn't get an apology. A sincere one. Um, so, she'll go on a different and change a brand new accusation. As I said, oh, you were with tons of women. My rose-colored glasses are off. How come your rose-colored glasses haven't been off with your own wife, uh, your own husband, who has been, you know, an alcoholic abuser and many other things over the past 30 years? How come you haven't taken off your rose-colored glasses to the world that you created that has made you in control and superior to others around you. Uh, Narcissists are not going to take off their rose-colored glasses. So while you're still defending your original point, she distracts or he distracts you from the, the, the point, but it's more so women, by changing this, making you the bad guy, changing or changing the subject to something else so you don't have to, you know, um, to something completely unrelated. Projection, and this is the last one I'm going to get into because I'm already on an hour. Projection. A narcissistic woman accused their victim, victims of actions or thoughts that they themselves are actually guilty of. Are you sleeping with this person? Did you go over there and do this and this and this? This is a primitive defense mechanism. Key. Men do it as well but more so women. I'm going to read it again. Narcissistic women accuse their victims of actions or thoughts that they themselves are actually guilty of. No, I never slept with anybody in 30 years. You're the first. Just go. Really? Again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But I don't think I am. I think there's been many. And if you don't see things a narcissist way, you must be invalidated. Any criticism, any difference of opinion will be treated as to, you know, like, phew, no way. Understand what I'm saying to you. Don't be idealized, devalued, don't. And disregard it. Understand and look for the signs. I'm going to have oh, any, a lot of what I discussed is going to be on the written part of this this show on the on the site. Um, I'm going to be putting up some links as well, and so you can follow the links. And remember, just because somebody may have one or two of these characters does not make them a narcissist, or and the sliding scales of narcissism. You know, there's, you can be small to, to, to grand. Um, and as I said, I believe everybody has some form of narcissism in them. Our society wouldn't be where it is. <laughs> it wouldn't have been built if without somebody who had grand dreams. And, and, and so doctors are, are a lot of narcissists as well. I would like my surgeon to be a narcissist, to be honest. That way he believes he's the best. Wonderful. You be the best, doc. And that's great. That's true. Um, you want, you know, CEO of a multi-million dollar, billion dollar company, let him be a narcissist. He's providing jobs for God knows how many people. They create an economy and they need to be that way. They wouldn't have gotten there without it. So everybody has some form. But in relationships, be very, very careful. Because there's nothing you have to remember. They cannot feel 
And if you see them feeling and tearing and things like that, it's usually for their own needs inside because they know they can't maintain the relationship or they know, you know, they're going to, that something within them and their world is breaking. And they will feel guilt. Some of them feel guilt as well. So like it all depends on, on the sliding scale how much they have it. So the, the disorder. And it's treatable. It's treatable if, you know, serious therapy. Serious therapy. It's just very sad that, and as I've been told, listen to what people tell you. I'm damaged goods, Scott. I'm damaged goods. Listen to what people tell you. Help yourself if you're damaged. Everybody. We're all damaged in some way. We all have baggage. We all have issues. Realizing we have issues, male or female, don't be so macho to not admit if you're a male that you don't have problems. And if you do, face them. If you can reach deep and achieve something else in your life, you can reach deep and look in the mirror before life smacks you in the head. I know it smacked me in the head many times. Good night. God bless. Thank you.